thanks for sharing your garden with us, Jeff. And for our audience out there, you can meet Jeff and other members of the Austin Cactus and Succulent Society at their Labor Day show and sale on September 3rd and 4th at the Zilker Botanical Garden. Find out more at austincss.com. I'm now joined by Wizzy Brown from Texas AgriLife Extension Service. And uh, for those who love all the plants that we just saw, our topic is a sad one today. That is true. And we're talking about a lot of critters that have kind of invaded our area or have blossomed in terms of their populations because so many of us are turning to the kinds of plants that Jeff gardens with. Right. Um, uh, you know, I love agaves, uh, but agaves, yuccas, hesperalas, all these beautiful plants that do so well in our hot weather. Mm -hmm. Um, all have pests that seem to be particularly attracted to them. Yes, yes, they do. And they, they can be a real problem. I mm -hmm. mean, usually people buy those plants because they are so low maintenance. And when these pop up, they're kind of shocked because then they actually have to do something with them other right. than water maybe once a month. Right, right. And, you know, a lot of us are, you know, are distraught about this because um, in, sense, in the case of some of these insects, there's literally nothing you can do. Right, and um, it can be devastating. It, it's very devastating to a gardener who, for example, in my former garden, I had you know about 30 different species of agaves, lost over a third of them in about a year's time to the agave snout weevil, which we'll mm -hmm. be talking about. Nothing that could really be done about that. Is there a reason why we're seeing this blossoming uh, of these insect populations? Are they just following our habits? I, I think that they are following our habits. More people are turning to these plants as kind of architectural pieces in the landscape, and they are very low maintenance once they're established, so they're great plants to have. But like you said, the agave snout weevil is just a terrible pest when you do get mm -hmm. it in your yard. Well, the, the other pests aren't quite as loathsome. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who you talk to. <laughs> are quite as loathsome as the agave snout weevil, but yeah, I guess it depends on what kind, what plants you have in your garden and what they're attacking. Um, but let, let's talk about the, the particular critters and you know what can and cannot be done on sure. this. Now, the agaves, as you indicated, are these beautiful, bold, sculptural plants. What are the first signs that you have a problem? Um, the first signs is just the the outer part of it or the lower part of it starts to die away and then usually that all kind of turns to mush and then you can pull out the center stem and it's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> And the collapse in this case looks like it happens in a hurry. Yes, it, it happens very quickly. I mean, it's one of those that your plant's fine and then all of a sudden it's like, wait, there's a problem. And at that point, it's really too late to do mm. anything. And when I noticed it in my garden initially, I thought it looked to me like these plants were drowning, but I never watered them. Right, yes, because it does get mushy. What happens is the female will lay her eggs at the base of the plant and they bore into the larvae bore into the plant and they take a bacteria with them and that starts rotting the plant as well as the insects feeding on the inside. So not only do they eat the heart out, they bring a disease along yes. with them. It's the one-two punch. Yeah, well that's <laughs> why the plants crater the way that they do. Now, um, in what in my research, what I, uh, what I read was that the only uh, insecticide that was any of any use whatsoever was preventative and those were systemic insecticides that is correct. which were highly toxic nasty things it, they're not on the least toxic list they are uh, more stout pesticides that are going to be around but if you're trying to protect your plant then that could be a good thing but mm. you do want to do a systemic drench around the base of the plant if you're concerned about that yeah and and, the, and let me just say these are these are not soapy water kinds of no, things sir. no these are nasty they're going to kill a lot of stuff and so they're not selective about uh, what's going to happen there in a lot of With ways. With systemic pesticides, they get taken into the plant, so right. any insect that feeds on it will get that dose. Yeah, I think the, 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 the soil around the plants, it gets dosed, doused yes, in these yes, things that probably. Gets dosed as well, yes. <laughs> I have a feeling that, that that's not very good to all concerned, but uh, you know I don't have the science on that. But uh, so that's the agave snout weevil, and uh, we have a lot of images of that. Now, um, one thing about the agave snout weevil and the plants is that 
people can do something, and that is practice good g garden hygiene, right? Yes, good garden hygiene. Uh, try not to crowd your plants, which with agaves that have offsets, mm -hmm. you know, you want to kind of dig those and remove those as much as you can. And then making sure that your plants are healthy. Don't overwater them, and that can lead to more of a problem because you're stressing those plants Proper out. Proper disposal of the corpses too. Yes, that is very important. Double bag those and throw them in the garbage. Do not throw them in the compost pile and you want to double bag them so those bugs can't escape and go infect other things. Yep. Okay, so that's really, really important. Now, uh, the, the invaders are not limited to the snout weevils. There's also a species called cactus bugs, which I've seen on my opuntias mm -hmm. in the past. Yes. They're, These they're are tricky little very guys. Very cute little bugs. <laughs> they, they're cute. Um, they're a small kind of grayish <laughs> bug with white stripes and they have red heads, but they are small. Mm -hmm. uh, piercing sucking mouth parts, so they cause yellowing and they can cause mm -hmm. scarring on the pads. Yeah, and the herds of them. Yes, they're not just one. And they hide from you when one. they see you coming. Yes, they'll move around to the other side. So when you try to control them, you might want to, you know, get some help to herd them your direction. But you can get rid of them with insecticidal soap. You can yeah. use botanicals. High pressure water spray a lot of times yeah. will work on them. Yeah, and I found the insect. This is one where insecticidal soap worked really well for me. It took a little while to get it under control, a couple of seasons, mm -hmm. but uh, reduced the herd considerably yes. with just the soapy water. Yes. But uh, so we have the cactus bugs, they attack the opuntias and other things. Mm -hmm. There are, there are specialty bugs for Hesperallos and, and yuccas as well? Yes, there's also yucca plant bugs. Again, this is a very small bug. It's kind of a bluish metallic color with a mm -hmm. red head. And they will, again, piercing, sucking mouth parts, so they cause yellowing and um, kind of scar tissue on them. Mm -hmm. But again, insecticidal soap will work well, yeah. high pressure water sprays. But they also tend to all go down when you're trying to control them, mm -hmm. so they're kind of difficult to get at sometimes. So they've got us pretty well figured out, a lot of these yes. critters. They, yes. they, they know our ways. Big creature hide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big creature hide. I think that's pretty instinctive for all of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something 10,000 times your size stumbles your way, yeah, hide. Um, now, uh, cochineal is one that a lot of us who, especially who grow apuntias, are familiar with. Um, and it's kind of an interesting little critter yes, related to they mealybug. Are. They, yes, scale insects are related to mealybugs. These guys are a soft scale, so they have that fluffy white mm -hmm. covering. But if you squish it, it releases a red dye that has actually been used in industries throughout the year as a dye mm -hmm. product. You're right. So that's the cochineal. And if you see your prick, prickly pears all covered with this cottony mm -hmm. looking stuff, that's what you're looking at. It's yes. not a disease. It's a living insect. Correct. Soapy water again. Soapy water, high pressure water sprays. Mm -hmm. If you can, if it's on just one or two pads, you can break those off, double bag them and get rid of okay. them. Okay. And there's also a hard scale yes. that's related uh, that doesn't look like an insect, but it is. Right. And those can be in really high populations. So a lot of those, mm -hmm. uh, you'll need to use some sort of maybe a horticultural oil, but right. you want to watch that in the heat. Mm -hmm. Insecticidal soap, uh, you can also use systemic products, okay. but you want to make sure that um, they get taken care of. Right. Well, I, I wish we had a happier topic today, Wizzy, but these are, these are all, uh, what, you know, enemies for the garden that we can be aware of and good being informed is half the battle yes. so anyway we, we appreciate you coming along thank you and hope that the uh, viewers out there will protect all those lovely striking plants that are doing so well we think we hope <laughs> right thanks Wizzy. Thank coming you. up next daphne mm -hmm.